Hello and welcome back and today is going to be a very short video that is a follow-up to a video from a couple of days ago namely Ugreen NAS are they safe now that video if you didn't already see it was about me setting up a Ugreen NAS with the whole range of their first party labeled apps and they're running it for a week just to see which domains which IPs are more it would ping and although there is a follow-up video on that with regards to better ways to block certain traffic how it compares with others one consistent question that came up repeatedly in the comments was if i have got a ugreen nas and i've installed a third party os like true nas on it is there anything natively built into the hardware that is still going to ping those slightly suspect looking domains there? And I, will, I was getting set to set up a Ugreen NAS device um, to see if it would ping um, with a third party OS on top, in this case, True NAS. However, I forgot at the time of recording the previous video that I actually did not only have a Ugreen NAS with True NAS on it, but more precisely, I've got one that's been up and running now for weeks. Here we go, this is a TrueNAS system here that's been up and running for 49 days. This is using uh, a DX480T. Now this is one that I was using for previous videos for Hex OS, and I'd left it running in the background waiting for an update to come along, something that eventually has arrived, something being able to install the latest TrueNAS updates within Hex OS. We'll add that for another video soon. But it meant that rather than wait, letting you guys wait for ages and add it into the follow-up video, it gave me the ability to just show you immediately whether this has been accessing other domains. Now, unlike my previous test, which is a lot more measured and was a lot more isolated, this is a system that's been running in the background of lots of other things I've been doing on the channel there, and I've not noticed it. I do have certain alerts set up, something we'll cover in the proper follow-up to the Ugreen video that we did, that actually would have alerted me if this system had been a little bit naughty. But as you can see here, we've got the device. It's being listed as an Apple Mac Pro because this is a non kind of legit setup here. We're using a third party OS on a branded piece of hardware there. So there is confliction, but I'll tell you right now, it is not an Apple Mac Pro. But if we go into it a little deeper, we can find out a little bit more about the flows. And I'm pleased to say that I saw no domain like we saw when we were running UGOS. In fact, over a course of a month, it was really only three regions that this HexOS slash true NAS base system that was using a Ugreen NAS was hitting. There was the IX systems update domain uh, kind of call there. We saw Plex, which we already had installed alongside Image there on the HexOS side of things and really that was it we saw the uk one where it was ntp for the time and that was really it in fact if we look at the data flow of the last month or so we really saw practically nothing there was information there with regards to automated updates that were going to be kicked off throughout the course of things and really when i was accessing the server intermittently alongside stuff like the ssl certificate so really not much to write home about there and nothing really to be concerned with now, am I surprised by these results? Realistically, no, notwithstanding the fact that my network set up here is quite strict on the incoming traffic and outgoing traffic uh, data sizes I monitor quite significantly, there's a better than average chance if this had been communicating for that 40 odd day limit there and something un, you know untoward had occurred there's a decent chance i would have spotted it but even if you move aside from that realistically these are systems that have been up and running now for the better part of a year in a lot of people's homes and businesses and alongside that a lot of people have installed third-party os's that although they won't take to youtube would certainly would have bombarded reddit so i'm not surprised that this is the outcome of what we've seen there in terms of what has been hit during this time. Nevertheless, I do think there is an interesting conversation to be had about NAS devices that are constructed in eastern regions and just how many of the DNS calls that are being made from within these systems are non-regionally specified to the setup and the country they are deployed within. A great example here would be my UNAS Pro here. I've got two UNAS Pro devices. This is the second one that acts as one of my backups there. And as you can see, it's been running for quite a long time, but more importantly, all of the DNS calls there are all being done within the US. Nevertheless, the UNAS Pro is not a device that has been made in the US. Un uh, Unify is actually quite transparent about this. A lot of the devices, I believe, come from Vietnam. I think some from Singapore and definitely some from Taiwan. So all of these, nevertheless, have still had made sure into their software that they are not calling 
out of bounds, as it were, for some users. So again, this is something I'm going to explore a little bit more in the full video, but I did think it worth noting here while we're digging into the Chinese NAS system like a Ugreen that has got a third party OS on top and what it can and cannot access on a hardware level if that was something that was hard baked in. Now in the follow up video that's about 40% done at this point, I will be looking more at just exactly how to block things on different platforms, what to watch out for, and the impact of blocking things incorrectly. So for example, here, I've already got a few different cameras from Unify and Reolink set up in this environment here. And although I've been incredibly strict about what this camera can access, as you can see here, periodically, it is still gonna bounce for an update there. An update that almost certainly will be China-based, given this camera is made in China. So again, if I chose to, I could go ahead and block that destination domain. You can block the, the set, if you will, or just the um, early bracket there of the uh, target. And if you want, within TrueNAS, you can even make sure to set very specific trusted domain and DNS servers as needed. Because one other big comment that came out of the previous video was a lot of users worrying about Ugreen system there, effectively ignoring what I would have set up as my DNS rules. And there are numerous methods that you can use to not only the blacklist different domains, but also a fix lists that your system can and cannot access as needed. And they do get increasingly complicated depending on your own personal setup. Hence why this video is gonna take a wee while. But everything I've seen so far does indicate if you are using the Ugreen NAS with a third party operating system on top, there's nothing in the hardware profile from what I could see in the, this kind of out of the blue test that indicated that the system was pinging somewhere in China in the background there. Nothing I saw here indicated that. Nevertheless, much like my previous video, the big takeaways here are one, that Ugreen with UGOS, I still think, could stand to do a little tweaking and refinement on some of the targets and domains that are built into some of those applications and services to be a bit more regional and local. And the other thing that was mentioned several times in the comments was the fact that too many users are setting these devices up without really understanding the full extent to what they can be doing in the background of the network environment. It could stand to spend a little of extra time working out some of these details and more precisely, just what they should be looking out for in terms of blocks. Another thing we didn't really go into enough detail on in the previous video, or this hastily put together video at least, was just what was contained in the information that was being exchanged to some of those Eastern IPs there. Again, we can use something like Wireshark that was recommended by a lot of users in the comments that I probably should have used in the previous video and will be used in the follow-up video in order to ascertain just what those services were that we're using them were, and more importantly, a little bit more information about the data that was exchanged. Because although, uh, um, the potential for a vulnerability and a bad actor to use uh, light DNS lookups, or at least what these appear to be, uh, is quite small in terms of its attack vector and possibility, it's not zero because it can just be small amounts of information that will allow for a back door to be opened. But we'd we'll have to look into that more. But at least for now, I'm seeing based on what I'm, I'm saying, what I uh, saw which was that uh, Ugreen NAS with a third party operating system gave me no evidence over the course of more than 45 days of the system calling to China from a hardware level in the background. But stay tuned for the follow up video. I am gonna go pack my bags and make my way to Berlin. By the time you're watching this video, I'll probably be over in Germany. Do stay tuned to watch those. But apart from that, hope you found this helpful and I'll see you on the next video.